welcome to this video tutorial for Pong Deluxe. Pong Deluxe is an updated version of Push Pong which came out in around 2014. It's been completely rebuilt so that it works with multiple control surfaces. Um, it works with Push 1, Push 2 and all models of Launchpad. So the idea of this device is it's a generative sequencer and what you have is um, balls moving around this grid when they hit the outer area then they generate a note and the note they generate depends on some of the MIDI settings here like which scale you're in uh, which key and octave for example and also when the balls meet each other if they collide head-on then they bounce off each other and change direction so first let me show you how to set this up um, if you're using push uh, make sure you're using the, the correct version, either push 1 or push 2. Uh, you should see um, this menu full of your currently connected control surfaces. If you don't see it, just click the little button here and it will refresh the menu. So I'm going to pick push 2. And what you would see is when you pick this, is it will take over the uh, button matrix on push. Um, the big arcade button here tells you that the device is turned on and it's it's taking over push you can easily turn this off the device still runs but it just simply releases uh, push to do whatever it usually does okay so with this on the device has taken over push um, and if we hit play and just hit a pad then we'll generate our first um, cell and you can see and hear that it generates a note when it hits the outer wall. If I trigger another one, and you'll see that the settings for each of the cells is here. The top button tells us that the cell is on, uh, and we can turn that off as well. Okay, we can control the rate of an individual cell, so I can make this one bit faster if I wanted to. So independent controls for each cell. You can control the velocity for each cell. So I can make this one lower velocity. Duration, so longer in length. And then we also have chance. So chance uh, is default set to 100% and it's the chance that whenever two cells meet that they will actually bounce off each other and change direction. So if we were to change this to, uh, to zero then the red cell would not bounce, it will just keep going in that um, direction. However, the yellow one will, unless we change it to zero also. You can control all of the cells at the same time by turning on global settings and changing some of the settings here. Same for velocity. Uh, if you want to set some um, global parameters across all cells. The scene launch buttons on any control surface show you which, uh, which cells are active and again you can turn them off here. You can actually activate them as well if you want to and there's up to eight cells in total. So onto the MIDI side then um, we can pick the scale we're working in so we could go for something like minor pentatonic and we also have note range. So at the moment we're covering quite a large note range, low and high. So if you want to reduce this, simply pull this down. We can do this on push as well. So it covers a narrower range of notes um, as opposed to a full range. Random velocity, default is 100%. You can bring that down. Uh, and that is, that's on top of the velocity being generated by the individual um, cells. So even though these are set at 99, the random velocity is randomizing the velocity further. If we switch this down, we will just get 99 velocity for all cells. Uh, but this is a nice quick way of just getting some variation in there. Okay, we, we also have random octave. So what I've tried to do is incorporate some of the uh, sort of MIDI effects that I would use with this kind of device um, that process things like velocity um, and randomizing the pitch. Um, so what you can do is choose an octave range, so if we go to three, and even though my note range is quite low, I can actually increase the chance of 
octaves being random and this will give you a different outcome to if the note range is just high because you'll just pick the odd note here and there and randomly shift it up one or two octaves so you'll get different effects from that okay so next we have the arrow buttons here the arrow buttons which can also be controlled on either push or launch pad these determine the direction of the next cell that's generated like which direction it will go in regardless of what direction it currently is going in if you regenerate or start a new cell moving this is the direction they'll go in so if we set it to up for example and because they're all going up on the wall on their own um, column then they're not meeting each other so they're not going to bounce and change direction unless I regenerate some, like so. So if you regenerate cells, then it starts back from the first one and counts through and lets you reposition all of the cells, which is a nice way of interacting with the, I guess the game side of the sequencer. Okay, some other controls we have then, you can clear all cells at once. You can randomize the position and direction of all cells currently active. And you can force all cells to bounce as if they've hit another cell, which means they just change direction. Okay, so the next thing to show you is the melodic sequencer. So with the cells that are moving around, you can end up with some chaotic sequences sometimes and you might want to fit them into something a bit more uh, usable depending on what you're actually making musically. So if you click uh, the button here you'll see a melodic sequencer. This is turned off by default and what you can do with this is when you turn it on it will receive or it will grab all of the notes being generated from the Pong sequencer and it will use them to update its own internal sequencer and the key to this is that this sequencer can have its own length so it can be set to 16 steps and it can have its own rate you can set your own velocity and and uh, length and it can have swing as well so if we turn this on and we can see that the notes are coming in and they're constantly updating if I want to turn some steps off just pull the velocity all the way down And we can change the duration as well of some of the steps. Add some swing. So what's happening now, we are getting the different note information coming from here, but we've got this constant and familiar uh, velocity sequence running over a 16 step pattern. If you have um, a pattern running that you like and you don't want it to carry on being updated, you can turn off the overdub button and it will just keep the sequence you've currently got playing out. And then you can just tap into this if you want to get some new notes information coming from over here. Okay. This button also randomizes the settings of just the MIDI and the duration. And we also have a fold button, so it shows you um, just the notes that have been recorded in. All of the arcade devices have been designed so they can be used uh, across multiple tracks and in conjunction with each other. So if I go to track one, um, I have a version of Pong Deluxe. This is for the Launchpad Mark II, which I've got here. So if I select Launchpad Mark II, um, the difference with how you get started with the Launchpad is it uses the User 2 mode on Launchpad 1 and 2 and just User mode on the Launchpad Pro. You'll see it go orange when the device is active. This tells you that the device is taking over User 2 mode. So click User 2 mode uh, and now this is ready to use 
uh, Pongia looks. So it's important to set some similar MIDI settings, mainly the scale, as the other ones you're using, otherwise you'll end up with some um, maybe undesired clashing of notes. And then it's the same process. Okay, so one thing you will notice then, uh, we can switch tracks easily and it releases the control service to do whatever it was doing. Uh, on push you can still use session mode as usual um, and you just switch to note mode to make use of the arcade device. Um, because of the way live works, when you're switching tracks you lose the focus from the control surface and it might be that you want to keep this uh, version of push pong working on here and then the track 2's version of um, pong working on this device. So this is the new feature which is called device lock and it's a little lock button on the um, control surface menu. Now this only works with arcade devices. Um, if you are using any other devices that take over things like push and launch pad, um, this has not been tested to work with those. It's so only really if you're using a set where you've got like three or four lie, um, arcade devices um, is what this is intended for. So what we can do is we can switch this on and now um, if I was to change track, this, the button matrix uh, stays locked to um, push two and if I go to track one and also lock this device to the launch pad regardless of which track I'm on in live I've got complete control over the launch pad version and the push two version Okay, one final setting that you might find useful um, is the hits dial. So when you have got lots of notes information coming out, or if you're running at, let's say, a fairly fast rate, and there's lots of notes coming out, uh, hits is just the chance of how many notes are gonna be generated. So 100%, all the notes being generated will actually come out of the device. Zero, uh, we will have no notes coming out. So this is a nice way of just easing off and just getting a few notes coming out um, as things can get a little bit chaotic with the Pong style sequencer.